I've got three different clients down the bottom here. I've got a managed device running Zscaler Client Connector, a managed device without a client, and an unmanaged device. The managed devices are enrolled in Azure AD. I'm going to show the managed and unmanaged devices accessing applications either using browser-based access or cloud browser isolation, depending upon how they've authenticated. We've got applications running in AWS. We've got a Bastion host and an Apache web server. I've also got some stuff in my data center. I've got a domain controller. I've got an Apache server. And I've got my SAML identification server, ADFS. In the data center, I've also got a private service edge. And that's going to provide me really good connectivity for the client connector user as they come into the office. They're going to still get their zero trust policy applied. And then in the AWS environment, I've also got a cloud connector, which is going to provide me cloud to cloud or cloud to data center connectivity. We're going to demonstrate that isolation policy. We're going to show inspection um, and we're going to show privileged remote access, SSH and RDP access, as well as the deception and uh, Zscaler digital experience integration. Let's get to it. We'll jump onto the managed client machine. We're going to start from first principles. We're going to launch Zscaler Client Connector. Uh, imagine the client connector is deployed with SCCM or Intune. The client will transparently enroll, It'll do SAML authentication, device authentication. It's enrolled into the domain as a managed device. And so Zscaler Client Connector is running here, it's connected, it's authenticated with internet security and uh, Zscaler digital experience monitoring going on in the background. We can come along here, we can go to our favorites, we can go to the Apache web server, straight access via Zscaler private access, I can go to my uh, Apache web server that's running in AWS, uh, so I've got a couple of different access methods. If I come across to the managed device without Zscaler client connector and launch my Edge browser, I'm going to come to the Zscaler private access portal page. It's going to prompt me to authenticate. So I'm going to log in here with a certificate because I'm going to manage device. Um, certificate based authentication brings me in, which means that when I access the Apache web server, I've just got straight browser based access or the AWS server that's running in my uh, VPC. I've got access to that directly. If I do the same thing and come across to the unmanaged device, I'll launch the browser, I'll go to my home page. At this point, I'm prompted to log in, but because I've got an unmanaged device, I've got to use username and password. And of course, the identity provider is the key thing, you know, it's making that differentiation of what I should or should not be able to access. If I launch the Apache web server, I'm brought into isolation. Isolation means that I get in the pixels scrape to my machine rather than direct access to that website. Um, the same is true for that AWS site. So isolation's happening in the cloud. I'm still able to access those resources. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, attacks that I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna try a SQL injection attack. If I just try that injection attack directly, I'm still gonna be brought into the isolated container. The request is then made from the isolation and Zscaler inspection is blocking that request. The same is true, obviously, with browser-based access. Although I'm accessing the page directly, inspection is still gonna happen. And of course, as you would guess it, you know, directly with the client connector, um, doing a, a vulnerability attack, they'll still get blocked going to that website. Okay, so let's come across to that unmanaged device and we'll go back to our page here and we've got this Priv Access. So Privileged Remote Access gives me a couple of other capabilities on top of that cloud browser isolation. I've got a CentOS server that I could access. I can log in here as root because I'm uh, really secure. I'm gonna go to cd slash var www.html. I can see I've got some pages here and I'm gonna copy the uh, index update to uh, index.html. The page gets updated and if I come back to uh, this page here, as you'd expect, the, the page has been changed showing uh, cloud to cloud connectivity. I could do some similar things here. Um, I could SSH to my bastion Bastion US East 01, log in there. Um, I've got my files here, and I'm gonna go from my AWS environment, Bastion host is in AWS, back to the server. So I'm gonna secure copy index underscore ridge.html to my CentOS server var 
www.html uh, index.html and update that file. So cloud to cloud connectivity from AWS back to my data center, update the file and refresh the page and the page has been updated. So I've got cloud to cloud connectivity and I've got uh, privileged remote access SSH capability on that machine. The other thing we could do if we come back to, to this page, we've got RDP access, so I could RDP onto my um, certificate server. We could log in here. I can do what I need to do on my certificate server. Or I could even say, well, I need to RDP onto that managed device running Zscaler client connector. So at this point, we're using the client to client connectivity to do an inbound connection over ZPA into that client. Now, I, when I log in here, I'm gonna see my session gets dropped here. This is the RDP session that's got closed. But now that session is available through privileged remote access for the unmanaged device. So I can give remote support capability to a third party, for example, using the client to client connectivity. I'm gonna disconnect that because it's not much use to me uh, for doing this demonstration and we'll close down a couple of these pages. And what we'll do, we'll come back over to this uh, managed device because I'm now gonna be a nefarious person, a bit of an attacker. And I saw a couple of things going on here. I saw in the favorites, I've got a Swift web server. I've also got an SAP server here. These spin out to me that I should be, uh, should be attacking these. These might have some interesting things on here. Let me have a look in the, the file. I can see there's a, a creds.csv uh, file here. So let's um, copy across that, uh, those credentials for the Swift server. I think uh, I wanna go to the Swift server here. So we'll log on there as M Ryan. We'll paste those credentials in there and I've got access into that Swift server. And we're going to jump onto my ADFS server. I'm going to do admin SSO into the Deception platform. So the Deception platform is managing those containers that are holding those resources, that Swift server and the SAP server. And this gives me the metrics to look at. So I can see that on that desktop device, I had a user, I had some system processes. They were going through the endpoint through Zscaler Deception, and they were accessing the SAP and the Swift server the physical uh, devices and who they logged on as. So I can, I can start looking at that and I can start taking action based on that infected machine or I can start to tighten up my zero trust policy. If we come back to the ADFS server, let's have a look at the admin for Zscaler private access and see what we can see there. What we can see is all the different applications that are loaded, the amount of data that was transferred. If we look in the diagnostics, we can see the different capabilities. We can see that you know, by accessing that ADFS server from this device, I was going through the private service edge through the app connector, and I was therefore getting the best possible round trip time, you know, zero milliseconds for processing, 0.26 milliseconds connection setup time versus the deception traffic that was going off to Zscaler Deception. Um, if I have a look at web inspection, um, I could see those HTTP requests. I can also see the transactions being blocked due to the uh, inspection capabilities. If I then come across back to my uh, ADFS server, I'm gonna launch into uh, ZDX Let's do an SSO into Zscaler Digital Experience. The ZDX admin interface uh, loads. I can see the different applications that I'm monitoring, the Apache and the domain controller. If we come onto the user's view, we've, we'll filter on the Apache server. We can see that this user, M. Ryan, on this device had saw a very good score, 95 out of 100. We are monitoring the application. We can see all the details about the user and the device they're on. We can see the time it took to DNS resolve. We can see the availability of the application. And we can see that that application, the Apache server from this device, came through the private service edge, through the app connector to access the resource. So I hope this was useful. I've shown you uh, Zscaler private access, private service edge, privileged remote access, cloud browser isolation, browser-based access, and all of the inspection and deception capabilities of ZPA transformation. Hope this is useful. Any questions, let me know. Mark at zscaler.com.